If you're using multiple cameras to create videos, chances are you're probably going to end up creating what's called a multi-cam edit. So you've got the video footage coming in from two different cameras and you might be using the audio from the camera or you might use a separate source to record the audio. What I'm going to show you in this video is how I create videos using the two cameras and recording the audio on a separate device. And I'm using a Tascam device to record the audio separately. So in this video, I'm going to share the complete workflow for multicam edits. And this is the way how I do things. And this is my preferred way. And I'm sure there are other people uh, who have their own way and own methods of editing videos and combining uh, audio files. But I'm going to share with you some of the techniques that I have learned over the years and how I create multicam edits. So first thing is first, we're going to go ahead and take the audio from our uh, external recorder and we're going to go ahead and clean the audio audio file for background noise and we will be doing this in Adobe Audition. The second thing is once we have the audio cleaned up, we need to sync the audio with the video files. Um, once the sync is complete, we will go ahead and create a multi-cam edit and both of these two steps will be completed in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now you can skip the next step if you want, but it all depends on how complex your video editing project is and what kind of effects do you want to include in your project. Um, but in my workflow, I'm gonna go ahead and export the footage um, to After Effects and I'm gonna perform some color correction and use some of the plugins that work very well in After Effects. What I have learned over the years is that post-production is much faster in After Effects um, as opposed to in Premiere Pro. Now I'm sure that over the years this has changed because both of these software have uh, come a long way, but this is just my preferred way of doing things. But like I said, you can skip this step if this is not needed for your video project. Now when you export the project, the resulting file might be too big for you to upload. It might be somewhere in the range of five or six gigabytes. So for that, I'm gonna show you how to work with the video compression software that I like to use, and it's called Handbrake. And once you have finally compressed your video, you can go ahead and upload it to Vimeo or YouTube. And I'll share some of the settings that I use when I export the video so that there's not a whole lot of loss in quality uh, when we upload the videos to uh, YouTube or Vimeo. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So the project that I'm gonna share with you today was shot on two different cameras and an external audio device. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and clean up the audio file so that we can bring it into our project and sync it with the video files. Now the audio from the external recorder is in the audio folder and the two footage from different cameras is set up in cam 1 and cam 2. It's a good way to organize your folders this way so that if you have to go back and make any changes it's easier to track where the video file or the audio file came from. Now in this tutorial I'm going to go ahead and work pretty fast so if you want to follow along you could pause the video. So let's go ahead and open up the audio file. I'm going to bring in the file, audio file into the project. Let's go ahead and drop it in the editor. So what I need to do right now is reduce the noise in the audio file and the way to capture the background noise and clean it is that you go ahead and select the background noise go to um, effects then you would go to noise reduction and first you have to capture the noise print now what I like to do is just select the area hit shift P that captures the noise footprint and then I go ahead and click on control shift P which brings up this dialog box right here you can adjust the levels and reduce the noise and you can test the results of the effect by hitting the spacebar on your keyboard. You can toggle the switch on and off to hear the before and after effect. Once you have the settings to the place where you like, go ahead and click on apply. It's going to take some time depending on how big the audio file is. And once this is done, you can go ahead and save your selection as and then go ahead and uh, save your project. Select the uh, folder where you want to export this audio file and click on OK. It's a good idea to save your project because it gives you the flexibility to come back and make changes to the audio file if you need to or if there's anything that you need to adjust. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out of this because I've already exported the audio. So once this is done, now we're going to go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro. So I'm just going to show you the folder structure one more time. We have the audio file in here. This is the cleaned up version of the audio file. And then we have the uh, video files from our cameras. So let's go ahead and open up Premiere Pro, create a new project. I'm going to go ahead and call this multicam edit. Select the location, click on OK. Once Premiere Pro opens up, the first thing you need to do is bring in all your files. So I'm going to go ahead and just select all three folders and drop them into Premiere Pro. Just go ahead and click through this failure prompt because it's prompting me that it couldn't import the PKF file. This is a file that uh, uh, Adobe Audition created and that's OK. 
So now that we've completed our first step, which was to clean the audio, the next step is to sync the audio with the video files. I will go ahead and expand all the folders and then just move this up a little bit. Now the audio file that I created was one big file. I didn't stop the audio um, and I didn't even stop the video. These are just multiple video files because apparently the GoPro and the uh, DSLR cameras cannot record video for more than 15 minutes so they split up the video file by themselves. It's not like I stopped the recording in the camera I just let it all go. I was recording the whole time and the second file was just created automatically. So the only thing that I need to sync up in this folder is the first video file from both of the cameras and the audio file. Once I have that set up the other files will just fall in place and follow along with the audio. So I'm going to go ahead and select the audio file and the first file that was created. Um, so on the GoPro, it was this one and uh, it's the 608 file right here on camera 2, which is the DSLR footage. Once you have them selected, just right click and click on create multicam source sequence. Here you can choose a name for your video clip. I'm just going to go ahead and call it multicam. Now I am syncing everything by audio. There is an option if you're using uh, video footage from a DSLR, you can go ahead and turn on the time code option. But because I'm going to go ahead and sync up everything with the audio, I'm just going to go ahead and click on audio leave everything the same and click on OK. It's going to take some time to process the video and the audio files and it's trying to sync up everything together. You will notice that two things have been added to this panel. The first is the multicam sequence and then there's a folder called processed clips and these are the clips that were processed and were moved into a different folder. This was one of the options that we kept in the previous dialog box so we're not going to worry about it that much. So in order to go ahead and start the editing process with the multicam created sequence you have to right click and click on new sequence from clip and what this will do is it'll import the synchronized footage over to the panel so that you can start working with it. Because we'll be creating a multicam sequence we're going to need a little bit of space up here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze this here if you scrub through the timeline, it's going to show you that the footage is coming in only from one camera, but that's not it. It just happens to be that that one of those cameras is on the top. Now, to create the multicam edit, what you have to do is you have to click on this button right here, which is the multicam editing button. If you do not see this, go ahead and click on the plus sign and go ahead and drag this icon to the toolbar. Now to start the multicam editing, I'm going to go ahead and move all the way to the beginning of the timeline, click on the multicam, and I'm going to start scrubbing through the timeline. So right about at this time, both of the cameras were recording. Now if you want to see behind the scene what's going on and how Premiere Pro has uh, laid out your project, what you can do is you can go ahead and uh, right click on that sequence that was created and just select the option open in timeline. So behind the scene, what Premiere Pro is doing is that it's keeping the audio file that we created. This is our cleaned up audio version. Now the audio feed coming in from the cameras has been muted, which is exactly what I wanted because I do have the clean audio that I need to work with. And I know that my second camera started recording a little bit later than the first one. So that is why the beginning point of the two is not the same, but that's okay. And but this is great because I don't have to worry about these because all of these are synced footages. So everything just falls in place where it's supposed to go. So let's go back to the multicam edit that we were working with. So let's go back here. Now let's go ahead and see how we can use the power of multicam editing with our edits. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is click C on my keyboard. Uh, that activates the razor tool. Hold down the shift key and um, just cut the sequence here. I'm going to hit V, select the portion that I don't want and I'm going to go ahead and delete that portion. And you can click on the feed from the two cameras depending on what is it that you want to include in your final edit. So I'm going to go ahead and click on spacebar. So I like how it starts, but then I want to switch to the second camera. And then I want to switch back to the first camera because the second one is a little bit shaky. All right, once I am done, I'll just go ahead and hit the spacebar one more time and stop right there. So what has happened in the background is that Premiere Pro has created these cuts in the timeline. So if you look in the output window, I'm grabbing the footage from the first camera. But when I move here, it automatically switches to the second camera. And then again, it goes back to the first camera. So all you have to do when you're creating multicam edits is just keep on clicking these, op these windows and Premiere Pro will go ahead and do the work for you in the background. Now you can also use your hotkeys one and two because I have two cameras. 
So after hitting the spacebar, if you click one or two, it'll just go ahead and pick up the footage from that camera. So let's go ahead and create a few more cuts in our sequence. I'm going to hit the spacebar and now I'm going to use the hotkey two, And then I'm going to click on one. And two again. And I will just hit the spacebar. And you'll see that Premiere Pro has created these uh, multi cuts in the sequence, which is great. That's exactly what I wanted. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and end my project here. I'm going to hold down the shift key and uh, cut the sequence, hit the V and I'm going to go ahead and delete everything else. Now, if your preference is to work in Premiere Pro, that's fine because these are all the steps that you needed to do to create a multicam edit. You can go ahead and take this to the next step if you want to color grade your footage and uh, you can go ahead and create an adjustment layer. That's fine. I'll go ahead and drop an adjustment layer up here and say that this is for camera one. I'll go ahead and uh, bring in a color grade. So I'm going to choose the Colorista plugin, bring it in here. Here I can fine tune the footage. I can change the temperature. I can adjust the exposure a little bit. Uh, maybe just to take it one stop up and adjust the highlights or maybe even create a vignette if I need to. And once you're done with the color grade, you can go to file and uh, export media. And if you're getting ready to export the video so that you can share this on YouTube or Vimeo, uh, go ahead and select H.264 for the format and uh, click on export. And say if you don't want to export this to 1080, you can go ahead and select 720 and it'll resize the footage for you when you click on export. This is what I usually use because the file size is much more manageable. So I'm going to go ahead and click on cancel now because this is not how I want to export the uh, footage. But then again, if you only want to work with Premiere Pro, this is how you would do it. So right now I'm going to go ahead and delete the um, adjustment layer and I'm going to go ahead and save this project. Just want to make sure that I don't lose any information here. Now before we jump into After Effects, there's one thing that I forgot to show you and that is how to add the um, uh, the additional footage that you've captured from the camera into your multicam sequence. So what you'll do is you'll go ahead and open up your multicam sequence in, your, in the timeline and the only thing that you have to do now is simply drag the video footage so that it lines up with the layers that you're working with. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in, um, let's just go ahead and bring in my DSLR footage first. So you can see that I've already imported uh, the 9608 file. So I'm going to go ahead and take the um, 9609 file and I'm going to drop it here. But you'll see that there's a problem. The audio that it's bringing in is actually lining up with my GoPro sequence and not with the DSLR sequence. Well, that's not a problem. We can easily fix this. I'm going to go ahead and click on Control Z to undo this. And I'm going to go ahead and move the audio um, and I'm going to move the audio tab so that it lines up with the DSLR footage and the video lines up with the layer where I have the video for the DSLR. So um, I'm going to go ahead and drag this now and you'll see that it lines up perfectly. And I'm going to do the same thing with the GoPro footage. Um, I'm going to go to the GoPro footage, which is right here under cam one. And I know that the clip that goes after this one is this one right here. 73 and then this one right here. So now we have completed our multicam footage. We can go back to the footage that we were working with and we can continue editing. But now we're going to go ahead and jump to After Effects. Now what I want to do here is I want to export this video footage as multiple layers in After Effects so that I can complete my editing process. If you try to bring in this project um, or if you try to open this Premiere Pro project in After Effects, it will not work. Um, it will be so confusing and so frustrating. So in order to preserve the linkage of the multicam sequence, what you have to do is you have to select your video files, right click, go to multicam and you have to flatten the videos. Now what I can do is I can just go ahead and copy. Now I'll go ahead and open up After Effects. I'm going to drag this window here. So now that we have After Effects open, we'll go ahead and create a new composition. And I know that my footage is uh, a 1080p and I know the frame rate is 23.976. I'll go ahead and adjust the composition so that it matches the video coming in from uh, Premiere Pro. Click on OK. Now once I am in this timeline, once I'm in this composition, what I need to do is I need to go back to Premiere Pro and I'm going to copy all of this right here. Go to After Effects Composition, 
make sure you're in the composition and I'm gonna hit control V and oops, sorry let me bring that back up and let's go full screen so let's see what's going on so what you'll notice here is that your multicam sequence edits have been carried over to After Effects and every layer is going to be from its respective camera so if I go to layer number two here it's coming from the DSLR and this one here is coming from GoPro. And this is going to preserve your audio and your video. Now, because the footage that's coming in is from two separate cameras, so the color grade that I have to apply on both of these cameras is going to be different. So the best way to group these layers is to search for them. So I'm gonna search for anything that starts with GoPro, which is this one right here. Okay, good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I am going to pre-compose this. And I'm just going to call it GoPro sequence. Click on OK. Now I have a GoPro sequence. And for the remaining ones, I'll go ahead and do the same thing. I'll pre-compose and I will just call this DSLR footage. Now everything in here becomes so easy to work with because if there's a color grade that I want to apply to the GoPro sequence, I can just go into this comp and apply the color grade. And if there's a separate color grade that I need for the DSLR footage, I can just go to that pre-comp and apply a different color grade. But this tutorial is not going to focus on color grading of your footage. It's really to share with you what the workflow is. So once you have your composition ready and you've got it all color graded, and now you are ready to export your footage. Uh, you just have to go to composition and click on add to render queue. For your output modules, um, go ahead and select QuickTime and H.264 is the codec that you'll be using for your videos. This is good. Um, audio is good too. Um, I just leave it to the default settings. Click on OK. Select your destination where you want to export this footage to and then finally go ahead and click on Render. Once you have exported your footage, the next step is to reduce the file size so that you can upload it to YouTube or Vimeo. So with Handbrake, what you can do is you can um, select the file that you want to compress and go ahead and select the destination. I'll just export it here. I'll just call it compressed to click on save and go ahead and click on start encode. This will encode your footage and reduce the file size significantly so that you can upload it to YouTube. Um, and what I've seen from my experience is that there's not a significant loss of quality, but the file size is reduced by as much as five or six times. So this is a great tool to encode your videos. And once you have your video, you can upload it to YouTube and Vimeo and share it on the social media platform. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section and I'll see you around with another tutorial.